right guys welcome back to the sawmill it's monday it's raining again i know that's a shocker for most people but it's raining here at the sawmill once again it's supposed to rain all week this week we had a nice weekend though it was actually kind of dry i was able to get some logs up to the mill we'll look at those in here in just a second now i'm out here at the kiln i got some white pine in here and some yellow pine i think i got about 600 board feet in here maybe 700 and we'll get this load baffled up with the insulation and get the kiln turned on so we can start drying wood this week while we're sawing. So check this out. Right here at the side of the kiln is my little control box. It's got all the kiln controls in there. And on top of it, Mama Cat lays up here during warm days. And look what she left us. Some nice cat vomit up there. Such a nice cat right there. Check it out. That's always nice to come out to in the morning. It looks like Lucy Cat's coming up here with us. I think Mama Cat's in the house right now. She don't like being out here with training. Lucy doesn't mind it too much. As you can see on the ground, I'm talking about this rain. This is just from yesterday, bringing some logs up to the mill. And we had three days of no rain, but it didn't really matter because the ground is just saturated here. More rain coming this week. I'm going to try to fix this problem in the next few weeks. Whenever it gets dry enough, I got some geo tarp to put down. I'm not even sure if it's really called geo tarp. It's, it's that road fabric people put down for roads. But I'm going to put it down right here, all the way down the length of the sawmill building, so I can have a nice gravel road right here to drive on. As soon as it gets dry enough, guys, I'm going to be doing that. I'm tired of this mud. Right now inside the kiln, I got mostly white pine. There is some yellow pine in there right here is that nice 18 inch wide white pine or yellow pine rather that uh cory sawed for us down at true south sawmill a few weeks ago really looking forward to that stuff it's about 18 inches wide now i'm just about ready to go i got some insulation up there on top to baffle the load down and if you're not seen this kiln before what i'm talking about is the air comes out of that fan the main kiln unit and that fan up there and you want to force that air to come down here, the hot air rather, and go through this stack of wood on the end right here. You want the air to travel through the wood and not come down on top of it. And right here in the front, I have some cheap Walmart fans. And for any of you guys running a kiln similar to this, this is a nice little trick. Running an extension cord to the front. And these fans I've got a switch for inside. They're on their own circuit. And I put these fans facing the stack and that just helps that hot air as it travels down and hits the door and comes down. It helps motivate that hot air to go through the stack. So let's get this baffled up before it starts raining any worse. Turn the key on and start drying some pine and head up to the sawmill. Cause I got something different lined up today on the sawmill guys. I think y'all are gonna like it. All right, friends, before we put this on the sawmill, I need to trim off some limbs first. This is a customer log. There's a lot of little suckers right here on the sides. So we'll grab the chainsaw and get rid of those before we put it on the mill. We also need to take a close look at this. We've got a rope sticking out. So there's probably some metal in there somewhere. I have to dig that out as well before we run a blade through here. I got this steel chainsaw. This is battery power, the AP300. No, that's the battery. The 200C MSA steel chainsaw. I showed this to you guys a few weeks ago and I told you I wouldn't really do a review on this until I used it for a while. And I've used it a lot. I've recharged the battery about four times. You get about 40 minutes of running time out of these before they start getting kind of low on you. And I tell you what people, this was expensive. It was about $550. The battery, I think, was the most expensive part of it. But it was worth every penny up here at the sawmill because it's fast, it's convenient, and it makes you more apt to clean up your messes when you're done sawing for the day and sawing up your slabs into smaller pieces for the burn pile. Very good tool to have. You know, a regular chainsaw is just fine, 
But with this one, if you want to use it, you just grab it and you know, push the button and there you go. You don't have to pull no rip cord or warm up the engine or nothing. It's expensive, but it works really good. I would definitely buy this again. All right, friends, about 10 minutes later, this is what we got going on. It was right in here and the rope actually fell out when I got this bark kind of peeled back. And I'm thinking what happened was, this was probably a limb a long time ago. You can see where it probably broke or fell off. And it's got a cavity right there. Start filling full of water. Had a little bit of rot down in here. But once we got that bark removed, the rope just fell right out. So they probably had this rope tied around this limb at one time. I'm assuming that's what's happened. So let's get the metal detector real fast and go over this and make sure there's not a nail hiding down in there. I don't think there is. I went pretty deep. But gosh, you never know on these trees, especially a yard tree. This one is right beside of a house, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go over this. Make sure it's working. Well, it's not even working. Should be getting a buzz right there. There we go. Now it's working. Sometimes it don't work. I'll let it warm up for a second. So, no buzzes right there. I think we're pretty good. I think I was right. Famous last words, I'll probably hit a horseshoe once we start sawing into this. But I think we're gonna be okay. That was probably tied around a limb a long time ago. Go ahead and check the whole log while we're at it. This is the second cut. So usually you'll find your metal in the first cut. Should be okay here. friends this is what's going on today this is an apple tree and this is probably the biggest apple tree i've seen around here now when i put this video out i'm sure some of you people have saw bigger ones and a lot of orchids in different places but for around here this is pretty good size for an apple tree and this is actually the second cut this is a customer log when he brought this over the first cut off the bottom which was actually larger than this had a hole all the way up the middle and that hole also comes into this cut right here. I'll bring the camera in just a second and show it to you guys, but it only comes up for about 12 or 14 inches and then it goes away. So this should be pretty good today and hopefully it's pretty solid after that point. See what happens, you never know. We're looking at about 78 inches here on the length. Right here on the operator's side has the biggest problem that we could run into, the diameter 21, about 21 and a half inches. That is really, really big, guys, for an apple tree. Most apple trees around here are pretty small. You know, that's that's pretty good size. Like I was talking about on this void, it goes up about 14 inches, then I hit some solid timber right there. So hopefully, that's all we're gonna lose. I'm gonna bring the camera in in just a second to show you guys this end grain. There's a lot of bug damage in here and probably some disease as well. And I'm not sure how this timber is gonna look once we saw into it. I'm really anxious to look at it. But based on what I'm seeing, it could be pretty interesting once we start cutting down into it. had to turn the sawmill off there's our first cut 
this is what we're looking at. Pretty gnarly looking right there, but it goes away once we go up in here. It looks pretty good, but I did have a problem on that cut, and right there is the problem. A nail right there, guys. That happens. Now, I got that metal detector, but it only goes down like three quarters of an inch. It would have never detected metal that deep right there in the tree. But that's part of it with these yard trees. You hit nails sometimes. That's unfortunate. So I'll grab my pliers. We'll pull the nail out, put a new blade on, and get back to sawing. Just part of it. All right, friends, got a new blade on here. This is a 7 degree 045 double hard wood miser blade. 045 thickness. And up on the timber, I got the nail out. Right there it is. And there's the hole that was left after I had to pry in there and get it out. And the easiest way of getting these nails out is just getting a screwdriver and some vice grips and just, you know, digging down in there and getting a good bite on it and twisting it out. So friends, if you ever see anybody putting a nail into a tree, hanging up a sign or anything, holler at them, tell them to stop. Because one day that tree is going to be on a sawmill, hopefully, and it makes for a very aggravating day when you hit that stuff. Right, friends, I don't know if you guys heard that while I was sawing, but it sounds like we hit some more metal in here. As you can tell, you got some nice smooth cutting right here. Then there's the washboard effect right there. Right there it is. Got a nail right there. And I heard it twice. I bet there's another one in here right there. Right there. There's a second one. Hit two more nails. That's aggravating, but I tell you what though, guys, look at this wood, it's beautiful. Look at this apple. My goodness, that's pretty. That's some nice stuff. And right there at the crotch, you got that figure going on. Some nice stuff here, guys. It's unfortunate we're hitting these nails, but that's part of it on these yard trees. And down here, where that rot was, where we started, you know, it's not too bad right in here. It's still kind of solid. You could probably pour some epoxy in here and stabilize it, but it goes away right there and you're good to go all the way up to the end. All right now, friends, check this out. There's all the nails I've pulled out so far on this log. And the last blade, I wouldn't even video, and the last blade actually broke. I'd get the grinder to get it out of there on that last nail, so that's aggravating. But here's what's going on now, and we'll try something different. So I flipped the log over 180 degrees, and I made my first cut with the camera not rolling. And it went pretty good. Famous last words right there. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I think I should just start sawing and see what happens. But I made my first cut there, guys, and it's really nice wood. It's just full of metal. I mean, gosh, very aggravating day. But we did okay on that first one. Some nice timber and some gorgeous, gorgeous apple right there. Just, man, it's nice. So I got the AccuSet dialed into four quarter boards. So hopefully I can make about two boards right here and work my way down past this bark into the solid timber and maybe get a seven quarter after that. We'll see, guys. So you never know on these yard trees. I think I've said that a hundred times today. Always full of metal. It never fails. <laughs> 